I lived on this street, and this bar, its full name is the Temple of Convenience. The council was so perplexed that anybody wanted to convert a public toilet into a bar. Well, this, this is the hole in the neighbourhood down which of late I cannot help but fall from the song Grounds for Divorce. Hello. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> yes, please. Thank you. You see, that's what you want. It's important to have a bar that knows what you want to drink. I love pubs. I love drinking. I love people. And this is where people come to accelerate their joy. When I lived on the same street, I'd roll down here in my pyjamas. And it inspired you. It really did. And Grounds for Divorce in particular, um, <laughs> I was sat here one evening talking to my friend Tony, and I had the music from Grounds for Divorce. Mm -hmm. And I said to Tony, we've got this great riff. I was like, uh, but I, I, need, I don't know what to write about. I need an opening line. And he went, what about that cocktail line you wrote last night? I was like, what are you talking about? He said, you wrote a really great line about a cocktail. Uh, and I was like, I don't remember it. And he went, you wrote it on a, you wrote it on a, and he went, hang on. And he leaned across and I was wearing the same shirt I'd had on the night before. And sure enough, there in the pocket was a piece of paper and it was the opening line. I've been working on a cocktail called Grounds for Divorce. Which you wrote here on the bar? Yeah, on a Cronbacker pad. I bet they still use Cronbacker pads. Thanks to Tony, I didn't wash that shirt, you know. But oh, thanks for reminding me. Down comes in on sticks, but then he kicks like a horse. So then it was going somewhere. Oh, 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 oh. There's a the rest you can keep. And the rest you can keep. And the rest you can keep. There's a hole in my neighbor. Winning the Mercury was, you don't expect a gold medal moment in music, but that's exactly what it was. Uh, this, this is quite literally the best thing that's ever happened to us. We'd like to dedicate this uh, award to our friend Brian Glancy, um, because he was one of the greatest men that ever lived. That's me and Brian. My friend Brian died, and he's the, he's the person that most of the Seldom Seen Kid is dedicated to. You could say it was your breakthrough album. Uh-huh. Dedicated to... Is that kind of special or also weird? I, I, I mulled that over and over again. How, am I in some way benefiting from my friend having died, you know? And it was a massive, massive thing. And when we came back with the Mercury Award, it went to Mandy. She's got it on her mantelpiece, Brian's mum, you know? and. He'd be proud of the dedication. So the conversation didn't last that long yeah. over whether or not I'd benefited, you know. Yeah. It was, I, I benefited from knowing him at all. Yeah. I benefited from having him in my life for those precious years, you know. Also did something else for me. I think because all my friendships had started in places like this, around booze, around rock and roll and booze. If I was down, if I was depressed, it was quite tempting to think that my friendships were in some way flimsy or, mm -hmm. you know, uh, superficial because they were based on bar culture. Because they, everybody was always drinking. Um, I was like, are these really my friends? Is this really what I'm supposed to do? But it only took losing Brian yeah. to make me realise that not only are they my real people, but they are who I am. These people, these people who facilitated our dreams as a band, populate all my songs, and they don't go anywhere. Yeah. Which is why 
13, 14 years later, I'm writing a song called The Seldom Seen Kid because I want people to know that he's not gone anywhere. <laughs> I had a dream, probably about... Probably about a year and a half ago, I had a dream that... <clears throat> I went down to the roadhouse with Brian. And we had a laugh and we had a load of drinks and it was a completely normal, uneventful night in the roadhouse. And when I woke up in the morning, I had the feeling of having hung out with Brian. And it doesn't matter whether that was from beyond or from within, it freshened his essence in my heart. So, in that respect, he's not dead. Thanks, man. Thank you so much. Yeah, of course.